Welcome back everybody, this is Professor Cameron from the Wentworth Institute of Technology. And what we're going to be working on today is this pulley assembly. And this is just a slight step up in terms of uh, advancedness from the assembly that we made last time, that block and pin assembly. And what our plan for this is, is we're going to take this a uh, few steps at a time. I'm probably going to break this video up into four videos just to make this process a little easier to follow along. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to first start by modeling the components of this assembly. And the first part that we're going to start off with today is this wheel. Now, to create this wheel, we're going to use a new technique that we haven't used before. We're going to use a technique called revolve. Now, up until now, what we've done is we've created a 2D sketch, and then we've extruded that 2D sketch in and out. For this process, what we're going to do is we're going to take that same 2D sketch, but instead of extruding it in or out, we're going to wrap it around a center line to create our wheel shape. We're going to revolve this. And the shape that we're going to revolve is going to look something kind of like an eye. We're going to revolve that around a center line to create our full wheel shape. Now we're going to deviate from this slightly because if you'll know this, this wheel is symmetric left and right. What we're going to do is we're going to draw just the left half of this wheel. We're going to revolve this wheel and then we're going to take this left half and mirror it over our right half. What that's going to do is it's going to make our sketch a little bit simpler and it's going to make our drawing a little bit easier to dimension. So we can go ahead and start this just like we start every other part. We're going to go ahead, File, New, and we're going to create a new part file. Now, all of our components today are going to be modeled in millimeters. So just like we always do, we set our units and we can set our units to millimeters. From here, we can come over to our front plane and create a new sketch on that front plane. Now to start this off, before we go ahead and actually start drawing our shape, we're going to put in what we call some guidelines. We're going to come up and grab our line tool. We're going to start right on the origin and draw a line straight up. And then we're going to put another line right at the origin going out to the left. These are not going to compose a part of our sketch. These are going to be lines that we use for building on uh, and dimensioning. Now, if we just leave stray random lines in our sketch, SolidWorks is not going to be too happy when we come time to revolve this. SolidWorks likes everything nice and tidy, and it doesn't like stray lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on each of these lines, and on our left-hand side, we're going to select the option for construction. What that's going to do is it's going to turn it into a center line. And that way we can dimension to it, but when it comes time to actually revolve, SolidWorks knows to ignore this. What we're also going to select is the infinite length box. This is going to make that line infinitely long. This is just going to make it so that we can't accidentally overdraw this line. Now since this is our horizontal line, we want to ensure that this line is perfectly horizontal. We're going to add the horizontal relation. And since we can't add a smart dimension onto this because it's infinitely long, what we're going to do is we're going to select this fix icon. And that's going to lock that line in place so it can't move on us. So once we have that line done, we're going to go ahead and do that exact same treatment to this vertical line. We're going to mark it for construction infinite length, vertical, and then we're going to fix this. 
and now we had to have a set of reference lines that we can dimension to and it's going to make our life a little bit easier from here we can come up and grab our regular line tool we're going to start on this vertical center line but above the origin we need a little bit of a gap between this bottom center line and the bottom of our part so we can just go ahead with our line tool and just rough this shape out. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to put in dimensions later. But we're going to end up with a shape that looks kind of like a backwards C. Now once we have this, we can go ahead and start to dimension it. Now when we have a shape with a lot of contours like we have here. What we want to do is dimension the extremes first. So we want to add in our smallest dimension and then our largest dimension. To do that, we're going to grab our smart dimension tool and we're going to come in here and we're going to place a dimension between the bottom of our part and this horizontal center line. That dimension right there, and we're going to set that to 10 millimeters. So we've got our smallest dimension in. What we're going to do is we're going to continue that same dimensioning scheme, but this time we're going to go up to this topmost line here. So we're going to place a dimension from this bottommost line, or this center line, up to our topmost line. And we're going to set that to a height of 50. We're going to continue this same dimensioning scheme to fill in these two lines here. We're going to place a dimension between this line and our center line. And we're going to set that equal to 45. And then finally, this line right here and our center line. And that's going to be 17.5. So what we've done is we've gone ahead and set the heights for all of the dimensions on this part. We're going to follow a similar dimensioning scheme to set the widths. We're going to start down at the bottom and we're going to place a dimension between this leftmost line and this backbone line right here, this solid segment of this center line. And we're going to set that to 25. We're going to go ahead and bump up a step and place a dimension from this line right here and this line right here. And we're going to set that to five. And then we're going to jump up to the top and place a dimension between this line here and this line here. And we're going to set that to a distance of 20. So with these seven dimensions, our sketch should be more or less fully defined with the exception of this V-groove. Now, if your sketch is distorted while you're doing this, it's not uncommon for this to cross over. That's fine. We're gonna fix that in just a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and zoom in here and we're going to grab smart dimension. And what we're going to set first is this angle. Now to set an angle, all you're going to do is select the two lines you want to put the angle between. So we're going to select this angled line here and our center line. And smart dimension knows to put an angle in there. We're going to go ahead and set this to 40 degrees. And you can see here what I was talking about earlier. That's not an issue for us. Now, once we have that angle set, what we have to do is set the width of this groove. To do that, we're gonna grab smart dimension 
and we're just going to click on this angled line. And you can see here how it's giving me this dimension that is the true length of this line. Now, if I continue to drag this dimension upwards, do you see how it switches right here? What it's doing is it's going from giving me the true length of the line to the horizontal component of that line. And that's what we want. Once we have that, we can set that to five millimeters. And if we've done everything properly with those dimensions, our sketch should be fully defined. And again, we can tell that because our sketch lines are all completely black. And down in our status bar, it tells us it's fully defined. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and revolve just this half of it. We're going to go to our features tab. And we're going to select this second icon in our toolbar, Revolved Boss Base. Now, what it's looking for here is the axis that we want to revolve everything around. We're going to revolve everything around this horizontal center line that we drew. We can go ahead and select that. And you can see the preview of the revolution right here. All we have to do now is select OK. That's going to go ahead and take that shape, spin it 360 degrees into half of our wheel. Now what we have to do now is take this left side and copy it over to the right side. To do that, under our Features tab, we're going to select the mirror tool. It's down towards the end of our toolbar. On our left hand side, it's going to ask us for two things, a mirror face and what we want to actually mirror. For our mirror face, we're just going to select this large flat backside surface of our model, this one right here. In Features to Mirror, this is what we want to copy over. We can select anywhere on this part. Revolve 1. You can see the preview of what it's copying over. We can go ahead and select OK. And that's going to take that left side and copy it over to our right side, giving us our full and complete wheel. All we have left to do on this is to set our material. And that is going to be alloy steel. And that's what we're going to use to set for all of our parts as well. Like always, we're going to go ahead and save our part at this time. And to check our mass properties, we're going to go to our evaluate tab and select mass properties. If you guys have any questions on this model, please feel free to let me know and have a nice day.